despite the threat of central banks, including the Federal Reserve Bank, threatening to take away the punch bowl of liquidity and quantitative easing. We're seeing announcements from a bunch of different central banks how they're either slowing down or stopping their quantitative easing bond buying inflationary programs. We are actually seeing gold and silver hold up very, very well. And yes, this is counterintuitive, but if you have studied financial history, and I put a screenshot there from my friend Jordan Roy Byrne, who I've known for over a decade now over at The Daily Gold, talking about how when the Fed actually has hiked interest rates in 1976, 1999, and 2016, that that actually marks the bottom or potentially the end of a bear market in gold prices. So yes, it's counterintuitive, but it looks like the threat of a rate hike in March by the Federal Reserve Bank has helped put in a bottom for the gold price. You also have the added geopolitical risk off that a lot of money managers, mainstream generalist professional money managers that move in and out of positions. You have a lot more of those money managers going into oil because of the news cycle that's basically daily now for weeks with Russia and Ukraine going long oil and also going long gold. You also have a lot of these oil producing countries that are recycling their oil profits, they're buying physical gold. So that is adding to physical gold demand, both from the non-G7 central banks that have been accumulating physical gold. Really since January of 2021, we've just seen very, very robust net central bank purchases for physical gold since January 2021. Although the gold crowd, the gold community that was predicting a big spike in gold prices because of Basel IV in January 2022, that did not materialize. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. But I did want to talk about some of the news stories that are coming out for gold and silver. There was actually a report that just came out from the Silver Institute, and they're projecting very solid demand increases on the investment side for silver in 2022. For 2022, the Silver Institute is projecting that demand for silver bars and coins to jump 13%. So that's a big jump. And the Silver Institute published a report earlier in February that it expects physical silver demand to reach a record high of 1.12 billion ounces this year, an increase of 8% from a solid number in 2021 levels. We're also seeing other anecdotal evidence from places like the Royal Mint in the United Kingdom that Americans are actually buying enormous amounts of physical gold and physical silver coins from the UK Royal Mint. So that's pretty shocking. The amount of demand from American investors buying from the UK Royal Mint, the numbers are actually quite shocking. American consumers increased their one ounce Britannia bars and coins by 96% in 2021. And the Royal Mint said that international sales in the fourth quarter of 2021 alone increased by 14.4% compared to the same quarter in 2020. And also international sales of silver bullion from the UK Royal Mint increased by 34% in the fourth quarter of 2021. So big, big numbers for silver investment on the demand side. We're seeing that come out as well. So long term, more demand being diversified out for gold from central banks and private investors. This is putting higher and higher price floors into gold and silver prices. Also on the supply side, the mining companies, their costs are rising substantially now with all these costs, especially energy costs. You have oil prices at over $90 a barrel. That is going to continue to raise costs for a lot of these miners. A lot of the miners do not hedge in the past, a lot of these miners did not have free cash flow. Gold miners in 2020 with record low oil prices and really high profit margins and free cash flow, what they did for about 18 months is you had the Newmont Minings, you had the Agnico Eagles, which are the larger and lowest cost producers with the most free cash flow. They did start to actually lock in their oil costs and their diesel costs with hedges. However, those hedges they did not put those on for forever. So those hedges are going to roll off. Even if they did lock in new hedges, the hedging costs are going to be higher. So the lowest cost gold miners right now, their profit margins in my estimates for the lowest cost gold miners, their profit margins are between $500 an ounce and $700 an ounce. And the higher cost marginal producers have maybe profit margins between $500 an ounce and $300 an ounce. 
But if all these costs keep rising, the miners are going to need much, much higher gold and silver prices to offset all these rising costs. And it's not just energy costs that are rising. Finally, if you like content like this and want to help keep content like this free so it doesn't all end up behind a paywall, or you want far more in-depth content research, financial education, and analysis than I provide in these short little free videos, there are now over 200 articles and audio podcasts behind the paywall, including 43 new articles and audio podcasts out in the last 30 or so week, and that's over a dozen in the last 10 or so weeks on a lot of interesting topics about global macro companies and sectors. And again, that's exclusive for patrons, all for only $5 a month. I think that's one of the best deals out there. And there's audio podcasts out on the uranium market. There's an article out on an LNG company that's probably going to be getting even more long-term contracts. And there was just some insider buying there. And hopefully in the next week or so, I will have updates out on the Hot Modern Goldstream conversion that Sandstrom Gold did. It's extremely controversial. There's actually a huge split between retail shareholders and the institutional shareholders. Institutional shareholders, the larger money managers, have been demanding this for years. They wanted a Goldstream conversion. So I'll hopefully be able to break that down. It's a very complicated issue, though, so it's not something I could just crank out in a couple minutes. Super complicated issue. And again, that's all for only $5 a month. I think it is one of the best deals out there, so please check that out. So if I could wrap up this short little video very quickly, interest rate hikes, if you go back and study financial history during the 1970s stagflation, and there is no Paul Volcker now, but while Arthur Burns, who was the previous Fed chairman prior to Paul Volcker, and then Paul Volcker, while they're raising interest rates, the gold price was still rallying, was still going up. Paul Volcker had to raise interest rates enormously to stop the gold price. Paul Volcker also talked about in his memoirs how he wished in hindsight that he had manipulated the gold price. So if you're not aware, it's talked about in his memoirs how he wished he had manipulated the gold price to prevent the gold price from going from like $40, give or take, up to $800 in about six or seven years. He wished he had done manipulation to prevent that enormous spike in the gold price. And there was tons of rules changes on the Hunt brothers to prevent silver from going even higher than $50 back then. The Hunt brothers were just totally screwed. It was one of the biggest screw jobs in American history of all the rules changes and all the crazy lawsuits by the government, the exchanges. It was absolutely nuts. So the mining companies, their profit margins, we really need to see gold and silver in the next two or three years. We need to see much, much higher prices. We need new price floors for gold at well over $2,000 an ounce, probably closer to 2500 to offset all the higher costs and additional royalties, taxes to governments, all these costs, labor, energy, materials, cost to build mines. The cost to build a mine is up in some cases 60% or more in some countries. That's how crazy costs are in the mining sector. So these costs are rising in many developing countries, even more than the stagflation in the United States, the European Union, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. There is much, much higher inflation in many of these other countries, developing countries, where there is a lot of new mines over the last like six to 10 years. So the mining industry and gold and silver have not done well since really September 2020. They've been in a mini bear market, I would say, trading range or a mini bear market. They really need higher metals prices, substantially higher metals prices, especially for silver miners, because silver miners do not have the profit margins right now that gold miners have. And that's why you have so many silver miners that have all diversified into gold projects or actually buying producing gold mines. So you're going to see that change or you're going to see big supply problems, especially for silver. But on the demand side, you're seeing even more positive investment demand numbers come from the private sector for physical gold and silver, for coins, bars, jewelry. And we already know that since January of 2021, there's been a structural change in non-G7 countries accumulating tonnage of physical gold. I think a lot of this paper price manipulation that kept gold in the tug of war in the trading range for so long, really since September 2020, this mini bear market, I'll call it, a lot of it was done 
by the bullion banks, the market makers that move these enormous tonnage orders of physical gold to central banks without affecting the paper gold price. Because normally in the past, if demand, and we've seen a lot of these stories for the last 12 months, that demand for physical gold and silver, especially outside the United States, but the numbers in the United States are still strong. We have physical gold demand increases in China, India, Germany, Russia, many other countries. Normally in the past, this would have affected the paper gold price. Since September 2020, it did not, but it appears now that that is changing, that in the next six to 12 months, we're going to have a big move higher in both gold and silver prices.